When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Meta Show for... January the 29th, 2022. I am Brisk Ball. I'm joined alongside the Matani. Today, today is a fireside edition of the Meta Show because there hasn't been a whole hell of a lot going on. And what you may notice is right now you can see on your screen the other two members of our typical fireside crew, Anominate and Merkel Jen, who are also my co-hosts on Rampage Incorporated. Last night, we had our Four Camera Friday show. It's our standard Friday show. And we had the Matani on with us. So really, today's Meta Show is not really even the Meta Show. This is just Rampage Inc. Four Camera <laughs> Friday Part 2, the Hangover Edition. Oh, man. Hi, guys. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Um, so... Thank you all. Uh, also, thank you everyone who's throwing money at the screen. One of the uh, money at the screen. One of the things I learned yesterday on the Rampage Incorporated streams, we turned up and then suddenly everybody was just throwing money and doing gift subs for everyone. I was like, holy crap, what are these guys doing over there? It's, uh, and I realized, wow. Wow. So thank you. Actually, now people are doing it here too. This has become a thing. People are just into just, just gifting now. I'm I'm 43 years old and kids. We're not complaining, days, guys. Let me just they're, touch. They're, they're twitching. We're absolutely not complaining. Um, I managed my hangover relatively well. Uh, and then it all came back when I was bashing my face into a bunch of IT related stuff in space meetings. But we are persevering. We are here. And uh, um, somehow I'm, I'm, I'm able to string sentences together uh how are how are you doing merkel chen you are you were the master of ceremonies and our guiding light last uh, last night how are you holding up today yeah as i said a little bit earlier i just like to know where i fill out my workman's comp claim because i was hurt at work last night uh it was a little bit of a rough <laughs> night but honest to god it was one of those where we came out of the gates so fast and so furious that I realized immediately I needed to start padding my landing. So I had like the standard dehydration salts, the party smart, miss brisk, double dose edition. Um, you know, so I, I ended up doing okay. Woke up early, got a bunch of shit done today. Had to talk about IT for about two hours more than I actually care to ever in my life, but it was a wonderful day. Thanks for asking. It kind of frightens me how many of your like, space meetings on Saturdays turn into IT related things. Because if you guys know, I fucking hate anything IT related, except nom nom. That's about it. So like, just like the whole idea that you guys had to sit there and listen to IT people talk for that long, that gives I want to break out in hives. Ugh. No, the only thing worse than dealing with developers is dealing with unpaid developers. Well, you know, what a, yeah, I, I walked away from it feeling a lot better because I got sort of a handle on who has been doing a lot of really good work for us in the Imperium. And like I started the meeting, oh, Sally Salomon just like threw a whole bunch of stuff. Awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, and so like we're talking actually some people who I think are going to be candidates for like a, a goon hero thing. We're not going to name names here, but, uh, uh, you know. Scope Hone and John Monty and Devil Crafter and Binary Hood and there's another dude who's working on the wiki. There's a lot of really good people who are out there doing a lot of really good uh, dev work and I was happy to walk away from it with silver linings instead of just like, you know, endless stuff. But let's not talk about this, even though I'm the one responsible for bringing this up by complaining about it. So let's just do a radical topic. Okay, fine. All right. We will, we will, we will move on. We will move on All to right. other things. Yeah. All right. Listen. There's a couple of things that we want to talk to you guys about just a little bit today. First of all, one, if you didn't watch Rampage last night, go back and watch it because you will see four and a half hours of some of the best stream of consciousness talk about the Battle of BTEC R that I've ever heard. And I have to say, we owe Mr. Merkel Chen here a <laughs> amount of thanks and a debt of gratitude which can never be repaid 
because he was the one man firefighter hanging on to that hose that was the Matani drunk trying to get him to answer questions and get to the end of the story. It was amazing. I was so proud of him. And if you've ever seen when we get like really hard in the paint on a Friday night, let's just say it's, it becomes very hard for all of us to keep our model trains from derailing at the station. Let me just tell you, it's pretty bad. I, I, there was definitely a tangent where I went off talking about uh, British uh, wagons and how they actually had uh, like, I remember talking about the, like the, the milk trains and how they had three axle milk wagons going into London. And like there were, there was a whole like double O gauge HO scale discussion. Like it, it went places and, and somehow, and I don't really understand how, but Merkelton managed to always remember where we were supposed to be going and eventually you know it might have taken five hours eventually we we, we got where we needed to go but very much uh merkel chen was the the man with the plan and the rest of us were just doing our level best to make it complicated as possible by being as uh you know distractible and excitable as we could get uh it was good it was that's good. what we do that's what we do <laughs> mark do you have any comments about your your uh your amazing feat of human engineering last night I do. I, I employed several different strategies to get through this shit because God knows these guys, they didn't even need anyone to distract them. They were distracting themselves. Mittens would start a sentence and four words into it have forgotten what the four words were. And he was like, wait a minute, what was I just saying? So I employed a traditional, maybe a primitive method. I just had a notepad sitting next to me and I would try to write down a word to remind me. And it's so funny because as the night goes on and on, like the typing gets messier and I can't even read what the last three entries are, but apparently I was able to get through it last night. So I'm kind of used to it because we always have a bunch of us and we're usually having too much to drink. I, I get pretty good at leaving myself little bookmarks so that I can try to get us back because after all, at the eighth anniversary of uh, BTEC R, you know, a lot of people, that was a long time ago now. So a lot of yeah. people either weren't there, weren't playing yet, weren't a part of a group that was involved with it. So to hear how and why it happened, you know, and the big thing that stuck out to me compared to like some of the more recent super capital battles, this one just kicked off like rapid and turned into a total shit show. So it's a really interesting story to, to kind of hear about. Nobody was thinking the day before, let's have a massive Titan fight tomorrow the way you would on like a timer or something like that. So really, really interesting. It, it is one of those things where uh, I found myself, and I think we might have to do this on the meta show going forward and in like a, a non plastered off our ass sort of way. But to tell the story of BR5 last night, I found that I had to keep going on these little inter interjections and being like, okay, kids, so it was eight years ago and Pandemic Legion was actually a big deal and not just 20 dudes in a jacked off fleet tagging along like a tailbone to whatever Vince is up to, right? Like, actually, back then, that was the thing. Uh, there were several of these situations where it was like, okay, kids, back then we had battleship doctrines. And I know that people who have played EVE Online only for a few years, the idea of you know, block warfare with people actually using thousands of battleships sounds like a fairy tale. Uh, it really did kind of bring back how much EVE Online has changed because you have to just be like, okay, so this thing that's been this way for a long time actually was completely fucking different back then. And otherwise the story doesn't make sense. Uh, so that's cool. That's, that, that's a thing. Um, so yeah, the, 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 for the kids, Merkel just terrified me last night because essentially he told the story uh, and it, it's right. He's absolutely right about it. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a great honor and great responsibility and herp, 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 whatever. Uh, but there are a lot of people that have actually like kind of grown up playing Eve online. Like you, the people who start playing at like, you know, 15, 16 or whatever. And like you see after years and years, they've actually like grown up within the organization. Uh, and, and so it's like, oh, wow, I can tell old man's like, you kids, you don't know. We used to we used to have to fuel a pass uphill in the rain both ways. Well, you know, while there's black screens and before tie dye and it is old man yells at clouds, but space edition. Good times. It was pretty funny. I have to say it was pretty funny. It made me giggle. Um, in, in particular, uh, when you get very drunk on the stream, you tend to burp a lot and that kills me and Merck every time. And that was, that was awesome last night. It was pretty solid. 
I have to I, say, I just go I, full Rick mode, right? Like I, I'm just going to sit here and you know act like a burbling asshole and and just sort of keep going. It was the greatest thing. It was the greatest so, thing. So. I, a, after the stream, uh, I go upstairs and uh, Miss Mittens asks me, like, "Hey, you know how are how are things going? And like, are how plastered are you?" And I'm like, "Well." Either I am doing a really good job of acting like I'm plastered on TV, but I've actually been sort of keeping it relatively under control and I can put sentences together, or I'm just deluding myself and I'm completely fucked and I just think I've been keeping it together. But either way, I think the objective was achieved. Apparently, <laughs> people that were entertained and I talked a lot and we had Scott. Are you not excellent. entertained? <laughs> you did. You were drinking some Moba and it was pretty solid. And I think uh, Mark finished cleaning out most of his house of beer. Although it, we're not sure, we're not hundred percent sure if it was actually Mark or if it was those thieves that keep stealing the beer out of his house. It's a, I, I live in a, a city in crisis. We must have like, I, I don't know, there's something's going on here. Uh, and really I'm amazed that they haven't taken like any of the power tools out of my garage or any of the cool toys that I have. No, all they're looking for is my big wave. Uh, it's very unfortunate, sort of like the Hamburglar, but he's probably wasted and looks a lot right. like me. Probably. Well, yeah, exactly. He has good, good Kona hats on. All right. So a couple of things, and then we can get into whatever we feel like talking about because it's a fireside show. First of all, one, my boy, the amazing Asian bro guy keeps asking for me to propose to him live on camera. Unfortunately, I am already married. You are like, how many years have I been married? You're like 12 years too late, almost 13 years too late, dude. Sorry. Mrs. Brisk, she was she was real quick on the draw there, so she got me first. So sorry about that. Second thing, I just lost my train of thought thinking about that Brisk, stuff. I, I just like called the last night. I can't God believe I did that. Else did it. It's a reasonable. <laughs> this is a reasonable time for us to ask. I mean, if you're taken, is Mrs. Brisk seeing anybody? Is she seeing or? anyone? Is my wife seeing anyone? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anyway. Uh, Se second thing, I remembered the second thing. The second thing is we have a little bit of Eve news for this week, and I'll go through it very quickly, and then we can chat about it if we want, or we can just go back to talking about whatever we feel like. But snuffed out. Man, I got to give these boys some credit. Let me show you what they did. We're going to hop over to the handy-dandy look at the screen screen thing. These guys have been in Vail. They managed to catch two fraternity titans, an Avatar and an Erebus. They killed both of them. They killed the supers. They killed a bunch of faxes. They killed a bunch of dreads. The battle report right here. Holy crap. 303 dreads. billion. Wow. 303 billion to 52 billion killed. This was in Vail of the Silent, FTAC H. It happened Yesterday, they fought through to downtime. So guess what happened? Fraternity they, decided they were going to copy us and have bubble fucked the hell out of the dread fleet that is still logged off in space. And in it and snuffed have been trying for the last few days to, to try to to, to help pull these guys out. We were just there about an hour and a half ago. We killed a bunch of bubbles, uh, but the dread fleet's still stuck in there. But I got to laugh because the boss here, Mr. Mittens, is very fond of what is soon becoming a, a meta show catchphrase, which is Pappy's going to Pappy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This morning, while we were out fighting, there were three fraternity fleets, an NC dot fleet, a horde fleet, a slice fleet and and amazingly enough we found test they had like six guys and caracals or some shit but it was amazing like there were eight fleets worth of former pappy members up there to waterboard one small null sec alliance the initiative hanging out with an even smaller low sec alliance snuffed out it's amazing like they can't stop happying. They're just, they're well, just, they just can't you, you, stop. Like my understanding, like I, I haven't been, I wasn't paying attention to the slings of error, slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, but I think like you guys went up there with like subcaps, right? Like it was, yes, uh, in it, we were in okay. So I, I just want to make sure that as we're talking about that, we're not talking about any Imperium caps that are trapped there that I just hadn't heard. No, of. no, 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 no. This uh, is all okay. snuff dreads that are stuck yeah. up there. 
So this is this is an interesting situation because you know I, I think that there's a few layers to it. I mean, it's not like I I'm happy to see people taking risks and doing this, and I, I love seeing people that are all sort of our enemies killing each other. Uh, you know, actually, you never know whether stuff counts as our enemies or not in this sort of situation. Uh, in this case, they're shooting former pappies, so fucking great. Uh, what I think is going on there isn't just Pappy's going to get Pappy, but like this is, I think, the first time that Snuffed Out has actually really gotten caught in uh, sort of deep in Nullsec, right? Like as low sec guys, they tend to have, you know, really good battleships, really good pods. And after trying repeatedly to, I mean, let, let's, let's just like, let's just rewind the clock to like May of 2020. When in our Jeff deployment uh, to Cloud Ring and into that area, we're like, we're going to glass snuffed out because some dumbass here just can't seem to stop trying to periodically conquer Losec until I've realized it was a dumb and a bad idea after like the seventh time of running into serious issue there. Uh, and it's just one of those things where uh, Nullsec often doesn't go successfully into Losec. It's very different rules, very different gameplay, all that good stuff. And, and this is an interesting scenario where they had a pretty clever like uh, Nullsec style trap, right? Like a downtime gank and then the servers go down. But then there's the scenario of everyone who has wanted to take a swing at snuffed out and haven't had a chance to really like bring the sledgehammer down on them has this opportunity on basically the best possible grid situation you could get, which is on a friendly staging Keepstar there. Uh, so uh, that that's going to be interesting to see. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm unhappy to see any of this shit blow up on fraternity side, on, on snuff side. Like, it's, uh, it, you know, I've been, been bashing my head into fucking IT crap, right? Like, we're, we're busy over here. The, the, the venal thing is happening. And, uh, but it is going to be fascinating to see what happens. Like, are, are they going to get bailed out? Are, you know, are just going to wait a few days? The fact that NC Dot is over there, Test is over there, all the fraternity guys are over there. Uh, do we have a rough idea of how many snuffed out like dreadnoughts are still uh, still stuck there? I mean, there? It's, it's hard to say. I, I haven't talked to High or, or Tower and the guys about it, but I'm, I'm guessing probably in the 60 to 70 range, it looked like based on what they had there. But I mean, Snuffed is a kind of group that they could leave them logged out for that long and no one's going to really care. It's not like they're right. they're going to have a lot of pressure from their guys. We got to go back to crabbing, guys. Oh, my God. We can't stay logged out for a month. Yeah, those aren't Oracle pilots that are like, oh, God, what do we do now? You know, I, I have a feeling with maintaining a, a hell camp, say, for like 30 days, 60 days, whatever. I could see that if you had a couple hundred Titans sitting there, but 70 dreads. We're pretty good at gate camping, as we talked about a few times last night, or at just camping. And I feel like we would get bored of that even in maybe a week or something like that. So it probably seems best, uh, you know, they, they may just want to wait uh, on that one, especially mm -hmm. if, like you're saying, all these tertiary groups are starting to get involved just because they know there's a little bit of meat uh, out there, you know, on the menu. So I, mm -hmm. I I'd, I'd probably just wait, wouldn't you? I mean, it's right. not like they're I mean, I don't know. Any right. grid. Yeah, I don't think there's really any chance that they're going to do a long-term Imperium-style camp. You know, I don't think they could if they wanted to. They'll probably right? only have to wait a few days, maybe a week. Because think about it this way. Like, we were talking a lot last night about BTAC-R, and then we jumped forward and we talked about M2. One of the reasons why the M2 gate camp, why that hell camp worked was because the Pappy guys would log shit in almost every day. Oh my we were God, getting you remember a that? Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. Like, we would get a constant feed out of these guys. We'd get caps almost every day. When it finally started dying, then we were still getting fleets coming there to shoot the bubbles, so we were having fights. We got content. That's what kept the guys, you know, paying attention. And people just suiciding, up. right? Like after a exactly. while, like after right. a few weeks, people just give up and they wouldn't get their character out. So they just log in and die. So like it was essentially a constant stream of content and entertainment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that would probably be the strategy for Snuffed Out. I, I don't need to tell them how to do their business because the last time the Imperium tried to mess with Snuffed Out in low sec, we got our asses repeatedly handed to us and then a big war started. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Like, they've got a bunch of, like, fancy... Uh, they're using Tempest fleet issues, I think I saw, or is I'm not sure. Tempest yeah, yeah they're using Tempest. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they've got their swanky battleships. They've got stuff, like, you know, it's a situation where they could potentially just go play on their alts or, like, figure something out. I don't know. But it is going to be interesting to see what happens because right now we're in an environment where before... The this happened, and thank you, Snuff, for starting this fight and creating some content for us. Uh, the only real news that we had, and we, we planned on doing a fireside this week, 
early like a, like a Thursday, we were like, we don't have a fucking thing to talk about because there's just not too much big headline space news. Um, you know, in C dot and PL. Uh, or I should say NC Dot and a jacked off fleet like glassing venal is not really like, you know, super exciting fun times. Uh, there have been a few just really terrible uh, slice uh, posts. All slice posts are terrible. Riot Rick should never be allowed near a keyboard, but yet he is. Uh, <laughs> Let me you post know, this battle report. We of killed a billion is killed and 500 million is right. lost. And yeah, why it's... this was the most important fight in Eve history. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No. Doesn't so, uh, so yeah, it, it, it's good. And, you know, this is a while, first time in a bit that we've seen some real like capital blood in the water. So, uh, you know, we, we will be, we will be monitoring the scenario. Uh, and, exactly. And, what they do. and to uh, Mifune's point, and just to highlight this, cause I think it is kind of funny. FTAC H is fraternity staging uh, system up there. They killed these Titans right off of their staging keep star. So <laughs> imagine if you will, if Pappy had managed to kill a bunch of Imperium Titans on the one DQ Imperial palace on dock. That would be kind of funny, but they never had the balls to try that. So we did that. Did. Uh, you we remember did that, that to one them, day though. we jumped a uh, revenant on the T five ZI keep star and ended up a as we're talking about what to do with the dreads. If we were going to get them out of time, somebody's like that fucking Leviathan just doomsdayed somebody. It's like, okay, well, we'll kill him before we leave. That worked out actually better than we had thought it was going to go. So that was a, that was a big day. Yeah, that's that kind of point. thing's not going to work in 1DQ. There's just any time of day, any day of the week, there's just too many Titans can undock from there with no notice. Right. Exactly. Goons are very stupid, though, right? I don't want to say it's never going to happen one DQ one because you, you have to keep in mind that we are we are we are very very foolish people, and anybody that has ever lost a war to us should really feel ashamed of themselves. Because imagine losing to us, Michael Fox. But uh, you, you know, jokes aside, it, it is nice to see. Like, like, look, uh, I, I am happy to see blood in the water. I'm happy to see that people are murdering each other in Eve Online. I'm happy to see conflicts break out. I'm happy to see unpredictable moves being made. Right? I don't. I did not have. Uh, you know, Vince goes to Venal on my bingo card, and it, it is interesting when you have your like expectations defied, and then there's this stuff thing. And you know, the Doctor Who thing came and gone. Is the Doctor Who thing still in? Is that out yet? Or it's got about a week. It's I over think. on Tuesday, February first. It'll be over. Like there's almost like 30k people online right now, which is cool and good. And so good. a lot of the, the the nightmare scenarios that we were really worried about uh, earlier in the year uh, appear to be easing up, and that's good. So a healthy Eve Online where people are killing each other, uh, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of any of this NFT bullshit in a bit. Uh, you know, it, it's I I I don't have much to bitch about guys like I, I don't actually i mean maybe we'll get go. a little later in the show as as things go but um you know we'll, we'll see if the spirit of, of the ranting and the raving uh flows through me but uh, i am hoping that we have sufficiently flogged this dead horse that the whole <laughs> nft thing is going to stop being at least talked about in the short term when by ccp Paltrow posted a fuck one of those stupid ass board ape things like the goop lady is like oh i've got a i've got a board ape yacht club thing and posted that on twitter and they just got resoundingly shat on all through yesterday so you know when i when i got up here a couple of weeks ago and i'm like guys we need to like mock and shame these nerds who are saying that nfts are cool and good because they're just loser lame ass bullshit uh it was sort of unnecessary because across the entire internet everybody else had kind of already started throwing tomatoes and so it's kind of good to see uh it, it is nice to see that backlash but um uh, you know sort of like that ship that ship is sailing the tomatoes are being thrown you know, and if you guys if forward. you guys thought that ccp was bad at least they're not ubisoft right oh mm. dude tell the story if you can no it just they're, they're if you go and you, you check out just google nft ubisoft and you've got mm -hmm a senior dev at Ubisoft talking about NFTs and how great they are and how wonderful they're going to be. And the players, the, you players just don't understand them. You don't understand why they're so good. What the issue, what, well, you know, you really, if you just knew, understood a little bit, you realize how great they are. And then they try to get him to explain how, why they're so good. And he can't answer the question. You know, I, I think that, you know, I, from a certain perspective, I feel like, and I thought about this last night in the meta show, uh, I thought about this last night at Rampage Incorporated, I should say, uh, as sort of like same turning thing the today, around right? on, on the other end. Yeah, essentially we're, we're all, we're all in, in the same sort of zone here is that, 
as angry as we as gamers are about the NFT crap and these guys trying to force it down our throat, I, I remember seeing an article a bit ago, and uh, this is again like in the zone of truthiness, right? Like you can go citation needed, uh, but somebody had took a look at it and said that there was only like 400,000 actual human beings that had been involved in a transaction involving an NFT, or maybe it had only been uh, maybe not 400,000 humans, maybe it was just uh, 400,000 transactions, period. And, and so the NFT thing is so obviously a scam and the uh, sort of the, the, the consumer level uh, hasn't really bought into it. And I was thinking to myself that what actually seems to be happening here, like who is really getting scammed by the NFT shit? Uh, I think it's aimed at investors. You have these guys who are sitting around going like, we're going to tell our players that, you know, our players are totally going to love this digital ownership because nobody's ever seen a hat on in Team Fortress 2 before, right? Like we did, like basically they're telling a whole bunch of non-gamer investors. Now, maybe these investors are like hedge funds or they are crypto bros that don't know anything about gaming and thus they're just like, oh, we'll do this. And it seems like a lot of the, 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 the C-suites in various game companies are telling these idiot investors that the NFT things are like the next big deal and it's a totally a great opportunity and invest today. Uh, and so on the one hand, we as consumers and gamers might be angry about it, but it appears that, you know, this thing is full of sound and fury, but the, the real marks are, you know, the whoever is dumb enough to buy one of these things for 300 grand or to invest in an NFT gaming company or a pay to earn thing. You saw this with a lot of the VR hype a few years back, where it was like all of these conferences and everybody's jacking each other off about how VR is the next big thing and how we're all going to ready player one it up. And what happened at these things is there was a tremendous amount of capital investment from people that don't know shit about video games or don't know shit about how gamers work. Uh, and so I, I don't even know if the uh the, the if the consumers and gamers are the truly intended marks for this nft crap because they aren't buying them they haven't really been buying them there really has not been much buy-in but at the idiot investor with too much money who doesn't know where to do things uh they're they're getting you know it's more tulips everybody gets to buy more tulips and then if somebody one day somebody realizes that tulips aren't worth however many guilders and then the dutch economy implodes and lather rinse repeat uh, through scam after scam after scam after scam throughout the hellish cycle of dystopian capitalism that we call uh, the cool zone. So yeah, that, that's that's my new pet theory on the NFT thing is aimed at yeah. investors. Yeah, I think the reality is that uh, almost nobody who is involved in crypto or NFTs actually understands the technology. And what you have are all of these p stories of people who became billionaires off of crypto. And now there's this new NFT thing and they're, they're trying to sort of take advantage of the people who felt like they missed out on crypto. It's like, oh, now's your chance to get in on the ground floor of the next big thing. And it, it's just a scam. We've seen all this shit before like decades ago, right? Like if you are actually anybody who has played fucking video games for any length of time, unlike these investor. So nerds, everybody here, but Merkel Chen, essentially. <laughs> it, it is, yeah, absolutely, totally. Uh, but anybody who has uh, been a gamer for any length of time, uh, we, we have seen all of these things that they're talking about as like a big new thing, like digital goods. It's like, yeah, microtransactions, hats and Team Fortress 2, or like the, 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 the metaverse and you'll be able to buy land like we second life. Right. Like it, that's one of the reasons why this does seem to be so transparently stupid, because it's like if you if you have ever dealt with any of the core aspect of video games, you would understand that everything that these dumbass pricks are going blockchain nfts any any of that song and dance routine like it's just like yeah we've been there we've done that we've seen that like that's old news but again if you're aiming it at a bunch of like vc guys who have no idea what to do with all of their you know crypto money or their bloated nonsense uh you know uh they they don't know about hats and team fortress too they don't know about horse armor they don't they don't know about all of the, the the land grabbing and second life and all this shit, you know? So I, I hope it all goes down in flames. Anybody who's like buying onto any kind of like Zuckerberg, like meta bullshit uh, sort of gets what they deserve there. And uh, I will be uh, munching on the popcorn as um, everything they know and love is destroyed. Looking forward to it. It feels very multi-level marketing. Like it's a digital oh, yeah. essential oil right. or something like Dude. that. And, and you keep having it happen where it's like, 
you have these people that just have this desperate feeling that they missed the boat. You know, they hear that people were buying Bitcoin at a dollar and now it's $39,000 or whatever it is. So they're just like, why wouldn't I buy a coin based off of a Shiba Inu or whatever the fuck the stupid gimmick is that day? It's, it's sad just because it's people that are trying to sort of skirt around and, and take advantage of something that they feel like they, they just sort of missed the first time and don't want to miss it again. So it probably leads to some tragically bad decision making. You gotta, you gotta be uh, kind of like at least laughing at how potent this fear of missing out thing that we have as humans in our brains is. That people are so willing to buy into something that's so obviously stupid, that so obviously doesn't exist, that so obviously is not really a thing. But, I, but I just, I, you know, I guess the desire, and, and I can see where these, I see where these guys, these business guys are coming from, because when you look at the numbers, like guys that were using an extra video card to mine Bitcoin 10 years ago and had like six of them. Now, you know, they're sitting on you know, half a million, half a billion dollars. Right. So these guys are all like, Oh, I don't want to miss out. And I can see why the gaming companies would want to sell NFTs. Imagine we move to a different type of in-game economy. It's not microtransactions because when you buy a microtransaction, you have the stuff, but it's not really your stuff. You don't really own your character. You don't really own anything. You have a license to play the game. We'll sell you an NFT. That's your character. And now you own your character. Congratulations. There you go. How much is Brisk Ball worth in EVE Online? Who knows? Well, but if we if we change the rules and we sell NFTs, then they can make lots of money that way. And it's just it just uh, it doesn't really it doesn't really work. Like There's that. no fucking connection to property law. Like that that's one of the things. It's like everybody's talking about property and ownership, and it's like nobody who has actually ever even like smelled a law school has gotten near this shit, right? Like it, it's it's just so fucking stupid. Like I think that's the idea though. Oh, it is. And this because is, this is, yeah. The, you like if you, if you go ahead and you buy a, like a super rare in-game item uh, as, a, as an NFT, okay. You own the NFT that the, the company that runs the game that that NFT is connected to doesn't have any liability then. Whereas if they sold you the item directly, then they would. Mm -hmm. We're going to we're going to totally bitch about some of this pay to earn sweatshop bullshit here in a hot second. But one of the things I, I want to actually use some of the parts of my brain that have been utterly wasted. There are many of those, but these particular parts of my brain have been wasted ever since I, I quit law in 2010. Uh, and back in the day, there was a period where I had to learn a lot of derivatives, trading related accounting regulations. Uh, and we're not going to get into too much of that. Uh, but I, I skipped I see tax, it, so I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, hell, state and local tax was was fine and cool. And I actually didn't mind tax law, but uh, when it came to, to this case, uh, doesn't matter. The, the thing is, uh, whenever like you look through the history of financialization and you will see when people come up with a new thing, usually the reason why they have come up with a new thing is to distinguish it from existing regulations to keep you from running the classic scams, right? The Ponzi schemes, the the whatever the fuck con men shit goes in here, uh, the MLMs, all of that. And so there is this arms race of uh, intentional obfuscational complexity where you go, okay, well, instead of seeing, saying Team Fortress 2 hats, because you know now the EU and various other regulators have stepped in to regulate gambling on platforms like Steam, is it's not that, it's a blockchain thing. And then you insert a whole bunch of uh, intentionally uh, confusing gobbledygook uh, in there. And basically these guys have to move around and come up with a new product and be like, okay, well, this isn't regulated so we can sell it and we can run these, these classic scams on the, basically the same group of marks because uh, you know, I think that there are whales in these like get rich quick schemes and they often fall prey to them over and over and over again. Like people who have been part of one MLM have probably been part of a lot of them. Uh, and so it is, it is very predatory. And I think what you're going to see here is when this implodes, then many of those same uh, people who are involved with the the NFT shit, uh, well, you know, they'll they'll just move on, just like Goldman Sachs has moved on to finding some sort of really new and interesting, complicated, you know, high frequency trading instrument or something or other, right? Like, there's always a, a rush to get away uh, from uh, accountability. Uh, but the, the the biggest thing I want to say is, 
the the highest profile NFTs are just fucking ugly and stupid looking. Like, I'm sorry, if you look at a bored ape and go, gosh, I want to spend money on that. People will totally spend money on that. A random celebrity got a got a like branding deal to tweet their stupid bored ape. You know, I, I think that we will have an opportunity to ram the dumbass bored ape shit down these guys' throats for the rest of the time that they're on the internet. Like anybody who has ended up going off and getting a bored ape should be just relentlessly trolled about it forever because holy crap, like they're not even good looking. It's not even interesting. It's like it's just on its face, a shit test to see if you are smart enough to be trusted with decisions that should be beyond that of, uh, you know, are, are, you, are you competent to think as an adult? And if you think that a bored ape is a good investment, I think that they should probably take your fucking driver's license away. Well, it's, it's another one of the situations where it's the people that are taking advantage of them seem to be people that have way too much money and not enough sense. And instead of doing what Mark and me and everybody else that has a brain is and just dumping it into the stock market, which is actually tangible stuff because it's companies that are making things and widgets. Although if you're buying random stuff like like Tesla and everything, maybe not. But still, like at the end of the day, they're trying to make money quickly. And that's has always traditionally been the easiest way to separate a fool from his money. And I think, you know, when it comes to the NFT stuff that we we've been looking at in terms of the game industry. I think the way the the way the game industry guys keep talking about this, it reminds me of like the guys in like 1995 who would say e-commerce and then the boardrooms would just throw bags of money at them. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward like to 10 years later and they'd say VR. the cloud and everybody would like throw bags of money at them. And now they're thinking, I'll just say NFTs and people will throw bags of money at them. And they're probably right. So at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people, I think a lot of regular people are looking at this as a, as a lottery ticket. And that's really what it is for a lot of folks there. Maybe I'll be the lucky one. I get this cheap NFT for 200 bucks and now it's going to be worth $7 million tomorrow because some idiot wants to buy it. But Arendis had a good point in the chat and I want to highlight that. Everything, whether it's real life things or, or, or not, the value that they have, the amount of money that they are worth is predicated upon the amount of money someone else is willing to pay for them. And until you sell it, that's just like a potential dollar figure. You know, I can, I can buy a bottle of wine for a thousand dollars, but if I buy it for a thousand bucks, cause it's my favorite wine and I think it's the greatest wine on the face of the earth. And no one else agrees with me and I try to sell it and I only get 200 bucks for it. Was it a thousand bottle, thousand dollar bottle of wine? No, it was a $200 bottle of wine. The same with cars, the same with anything else. Like I have all kinds of trinkets in my, in my office here. You guys have seen them. Some of them are older than others. Some of them are more valuable than others, but they're not worth what I say they're worth because what I'm attaching to them is the value that maybe I paid for them. But if I got it, if I want to, as we would say in the legal business, alienate this property. I got to be able to sell it. And if it don't sell for the amount that I, I'm asking for it, then that's not what it's worth. Mm -hmm. and these guys don't get that. And so I say, so, oh, it's worth, so oh, I, I, I've got an NFT. It's worth $200 million. No, it's not. Unless you can buy some, find some idiot to sell it to for that much. It's not worth anything. Sorry. I've been running yeah. into a pretty neat, I consider it fairly erotic, um, thing that's floating around on the internet lately and it's it porn? like it's porn right no well i mean okay. it's porn for us but not that kind of porn oh, it's okay. like all right. All right. oh my ape was stolen today and <laughs> 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 this fucking meltdown about how ape number 37 cost 65 grand and the guy's like you know i don't have very much money can you guys help me get that back and i'm like dude you paid 65 grand for a pretend picture of a gorilla on the internet that's a cartoon like yeah, so I, I don't know. There's been so many of them, like a rash of my ape was stolen, which is they're fucking pogs. Like they're I don't pogs. understand it. Like they're just pogs on the fucking internet, and the, those kind of pogs are beanie babies. It, it, it's not an underlying income-producing asset. If you want to try to distinguish something, like and this is a challenge with gold, but that is like you know, it's a place where you can park money. Uh, gold at least will retain its value in theory, but there the underlying asset 
is not something like buying a share of a farm or having a business uh, shares in a business that has regulations and dividends and spits out like that, right? Like you are purchasing a tulip bulb and the only value of that tulip bulb is hoping that you can find someone dumber than you to dump it on them for more money so you can scam them, right? And, and it's just this circle jerk of like, you know, basically the libertarians have gotten into like the MLM zone with this stuff. Uh, and, and that that is something that is it's just an easy bullshit test, right? Have you purchased a property interest in a asset which independently of your interest produces additional value? If you buy a farm, that farm spits out crops, right? There is stuff that grows there. You can get money from that. It does something. The best that you can do uh, with, with something like a bored ape is hope that some dumbass will buy it off of you. It's not sitting out there producing more bored apes. It's not producing new money. It's not adding to its own value. Uh, it is it is not an income producing asset, which is why it's hilarious that you have all these, you know, uh, you know, fuck boys running around and calling themselves, I'm an investor because I bought an ape. You're not a fucking investor. You're a mark. You're a mook. You're a lamer and you're a scammer. And fuck all that noise. I have to say, for the record, I know I've, I've got a lot of questions about this. I had to ask Fountain Frank, but to our knowledge, no, Querious George was not the model for the board ape, but he could have been. <laughs> That's a good question. Just saying. <laughs> So we, saying. mittens, we can put you down as like a maybe as far as if you support <laughs> NFT. You're not, like you're not, you haven't decided yet whether you're into Eve Online involving NFTs yet. Uh, yeah, you, you know me. I'm I'm big on being undecided and uh, <laughs> open mind. But yeah. All right. So it's to switch over uh, yeah, from the NFT up. chat for a little while, I do have an announcement that I want to make uh, that that the guys had asked me to do. And if you had watched Push the Talk earlier, we talked a little bit about it on there, but. Y'all like tournaments, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all like them tournaments, like them tournament things. Well, the AT is not going to be around for another what nine months, but, but, and that's a pretty big but. That is a Nicki Minaj size but. Ooh. You don't have to wait that long. You know why you don't have to wait that long? Because Anger Games Five, Ooh. the Anger Games, Imperium sponsored. It's a goon classic. The Anger Games are coming up. They're going to be taking place across three weekends, May 28th, starting May 28th to 29th, and then June 4th and 5th, right before my anniversary. June 11th and 12th is the finals. So if you're interested in joining a Alliance tournament style tournament that's better than the Alliance tournament, because we run it. <laughs> it's 2,500 plex to, to join. All of the events will be happening on the Thunderdome server, so you're not going to lose anything on TQ. And it'll be broadcast live here on Imperium News Network during that time period. So the signups begin February 5th. I'm going to link the, the Reddit thread in the chat. You guys can take a look at that. If you are interested, please be happy to have you guys. The best part of the Anger Games it's not the Alliance tournament style fighting. It's not the excellent commentary by guys like Soth and Dirk Statil, who has promised me he will speed up his chatting for, for the commentary. It is not because it's on INN. It's not because it's on Thunderdome. The best thing about Anger Games 5 is no NFTs. Nice. That is there true. Another, not a one. There's another piece of good news this week, Brisk. I, I just occurred to me. Um, CCP sent out a message related to FanFest um, that, you know, if, if you guys hadn't heard, like the Icelandic government is really, really um, conservative with how they've handled uh, COVID just related to other countries. They kind of are one of those where like get some outbreaks and boom, we're locking it down real hard and stuff like that. I think there's been some evolution with a lot of countries as the whole thing has progressed um, related to how they're going to handle it. And everybody was really worried about fan fests. Like, dude, they're going to let, you know, 2000 people or something into a room together to hang out. And are the restaurants going to be closing at 10 o'clock at night as they were and, and, you know, have limitations on seating and stuff like that. And they just announced maybe two days ago that uh, their government has kind of said, look, we're going to take the baffles off this one um, easing of restrictions 
further continued easing of restrictions, I think a little bit downstream. So that's certainly good news for anybody that was thinking about going because you're like, holy shit, man, that would be a shame if they didn't have some kind of assurances from the government because Iceland, for all intents and purposes, is basically like a big city, you know, um, everybody lives kind of in the same place there. Um, so it could go, you know, either way where, you know, those decisions you would really worry would just totally ruin the event. So it seems like such is not the case. Maybe they lobbied uh they lobbied the uh the government or something but that's really good news uh, for anybody that had a ticket or was thinking about going and i think you know we had told them merck and i have both had told them and non am sure chimed in as well you guys can't cancel fan fest no matter what right yeah just <laughs> as long as we can get in the country there has to be some kind of fan fest so when we saw this announcement it was like oh the angels were singing in the background weight was lifted off of all of our shoulders the fear that we would not be able to come and hang out with all of you space nerds in Reykjavik uh, went away, which is good. And let's hope between now and then, because yes, it is January. FanFest is in May. That's five months. A lot can happen in five months, although even January is mostly over. So it's really four months. A lot can happen in four months, and hopefully we're not going to be dealing with like the Omega variant you know, or the Zy or the Zeta variant or some other horse shit. Uh, and we'll be able to go there and hang out with you guys. And I love Fan Fest for two reasons. One, because I've never gone and I really want to. Oh, shit. That's right. I've never gone and I want to. And second, because Vegas is great for those of us in the United States. It's a very easy city to get to. It's like a hub and spoke kind of thing. And we all come out there. But Iceland is better for, I think, the game in general, because unless you're coming from the exact opposite part of the world, sorry, Australia, it is equidistant and really close folks on the West Coast of the United States, folks on the east eastern side of Europe and Russia can get over to Iceland, and it's not too crazy. So the best chance for me getting to hang out with my non-American pals, like Sadis and Pando and Dark Shines and those guys, is to see them in Iceland. So I'm looking forward to that because that's the best best chance. And I, I've seen them seen most of those guys at Eve London, but I feel like we'll get even more folks coming to to FanFest in Iceland and we hope to see you guys there. I know at least three of us are going, hopefully, and hopefully Mittens will be there too. So you might Yeah, we're, we're planning on, on making this one. Like our, our January meet plans got screwed, but uh, we are aiming for FanFest and, you know, at least in my personal estimations of the, you know, shit could happen, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the way that Omicron and the, you know, throughout most of history, the way that plagues work is that the disease typically becomes more infectious, but less like kill you, uh, you know, whatever it spreads faster and it kills you less over time. And that seems to be the, the sort of predictable continuum we're on right now. So, uh, you know, I don't think we're in, in theory, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, blah, blah, blah. But like, I think that, you know, the, the, this, with this things are not by the time we get to May, um, you know, I, I think there's a bright future, right? Like I'm, I'm, I don't really feel like, oh my God, pandemic personally, like I've been getting back on the elliptical because I'm like, gosh, I'm going to have to like go outside and interact with people more and like actually get to live my fucking life again. Uh, and, and, you know, do all that good stuff. Uh, and, um, so it's not just that I personally think that things are getting better, but it's, I think that things are getting better. And so my fat ass is on an elliptical again. So there there's actual work that's going towards that. I, I'm placing my bets. I am bullish on FanFest and bullish on the world opening up. And I'm really looking forward to being able to get back to being a globetrotting uh, space in because it's a lot of fun. Having, that. We, we got kind of a dry run out of DC. I know it wasn't the biggest group. It was only about 150 people, but we seem to escape that one unscathed. I mean, it was, we had a couple people warn us that, that you know, they, they were not feeling well, but that was actually over a week after we had all gotten home. So no real telling, you know, it didn't turn into the, super spreader event that we were very much hoping it wasn't so i think it's uh that's an encouraging sign little tiny uh test tube event there you go and mrs froggy's like i'm excited i want another event we haven't had one in two weeks so yeah <laughs> yeah I, I hear you i hear you so that's good um i'm trying to think if there's anything else like specific eve stuff that's that's happening or that uh, that is oh yes i did forget to mention this dark shines had wanted me to remind all of our dear friends in, in fire, we're sorry about your jump bridges. I know they're all dead or mostly dead or reft, 
I know it's going to be hard for you guys to move around Faith Abilis. Sorry, but you shouldn't have left them out where we could step on them. We're just too big now. We don't even we can't even see where we're stepping sometimes. So that's what happens when you leave your stuff out in the cold. So yeah, we killed a bunch of them today this morning. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I think they have like three active FCs in fire, and those guys are kind of like burning out. So thing, things are, we'll have to see how that develops. It, it is kind of interesting that uh, on the chessboard, like we had sort of anticipated that maybe the PLNC guys would come down uh, and intervene against the initiative. And instead, uh, they went to venal and they're doing venal things off on their own, which means that fire and the people that might have been intending on the rest of Pappy to come bail them out uh, have been left to their own devices, which is perfectly fine because that's what you get. Uh, so wonderful. I don't know. You guys burn a bunch of fucking jump bridges today. We did. Uh, we had fun. How many did you get? Uh, I think five. I think That's they had. Good. I think they have seven. I think we killed five, yeah. and there are two that are left that are still. Uh, yep. That are yep. ref, yep. but they're not like on. That. But it's good. So that makes me happy. Dark shines delivering the goods. You know it. It's what we do. I'm always proud of those groups when they figure out something to do that isn't just piggybacking on whatever the goons are doing. It's nice to go have fun. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going going to venal, doing something different, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, guys, honestly, I'm dragging ass. Like I thought, I thought at the start of the, the show, I'm sitting there, I'm going great. We're heard from Loris, we're doing things, <laughs> and I, I'm afraid I'm getting kind of like a delayed action hangover here. I, I think that I spoke too soon. When you I'm need like, to oh, drink you know, water. I was, I was drink just fine, and you know, I've, I've been, I've been on that liquid IV shit. I've been chugging water. All right, well, eating, all right, good. Well, you got to keep you know, it. Up. We're, 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 we're working on it. We're working on it. But, keep it up, man. We, we, we so. rolled hard last night. We, we, like, what did I run my mouth for? Like five fucking hours yesterday. yes you did like, almost non-stop on by brand. the way it was impressive on brand very it was very amazing honest. like and was, then uh... like once the belching shit started happening because it always starts out as like he'll try to kind of hide it but not hard and then by the end he's throwing <laughs> a full-throated effort into you know how like like your parent like your dad or your grandpa them sneezing is like a, a giant event. It's the loudest thing on earth. Right. You know? Like a shotgun same blast with, going off next to your head. Yeah, it's the same with him at like 1130 p.m. after four hours of drinking where he's just trying to make a spectacle out of it. And I couldn't hold it together anymore by the end. It was just too goddamn funny. Uh, you know, the thing was, usually we're, we're going for long enough that as long as you like deploy the parachutes at some point to slow yourself down, it, you'll be okay. Right. It's not like we're getting together during this one hour program and trying to drink seven drinks, right. Right. Doing it exactly. five hours is pretty different. So I uh, usually, if anything, I'm, I'm like a little fatigued afterward, but the incidents of waking up with like a truly crushing hangover where you're like, man, I'm never doing that again. Fortunately doesn't happen too much uh, to us anymore. Now to be, to be honest, I did try to cut mittens off last night. Like I cut my wife off whenever she gets too drunk on the show. Right. Cause I told him, I said, now mittens, remember you have to be chipper for the meta show tomorrow. You better, you better stop drinking now. And of course I got outed as a narc and the FBI by my wife. So. And then I drank so much. I forgot that completely. So that, that works. There too. you go. Exactly. Yeah. It was fine. So yeah, you know. I, uh, it was good. It's good though. Um, yeah. So I, I think that we're we're headed towards the the end of this. I think we're reaching sort of a natural we conclusion. Are. But we, we, we do are. have some, you know, we've got some stuff to look forward to. We're going to be keeping an eye on the uh, the FRT versus snuff like staging system excitement. Uh, we are, I guess, more jump bridges are going to die. There was some dark shines erotic fan fiction that was uh, we that did. There was a good one involving the starring edge. the edge. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. If you guys haven't seen that, you should go check and, that out. Yeah, and so. a special guest is revealed at the very end All of right. that one, which is fun. Um, but yeah, I, I All think right. we're... Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to watch the Meta Show. This is our Fireside Edition for January the 29th, 2022. I'm Brisker Ball, joined by the Matani and Nominate and Merkel Chen of Rampage Incorporated. Also, the three of us are currently serving CSM members, and we're actually having a little bit more fun doing that this week than we have in a while. You should take that as a good sign. Good, good. And good and now, of course, at the end of the show, out come all of the crazy filters, like <laughs> like Mark's filter right now. <laughs> and I want to say the reason why he's smiling so big is because you guys are here watching us and not talking in stations, and we have ten times as many people watching us now. So thank you for watching our show, ladies and gentlemen. 
It's been a hoot. Last words from any of you guys before we get out of here. I would, I would, I was going to try to muster a burp, but I burped so much yesterday that I, I actually have nothing in my system right now. So I can't even. All right. That. But Mark, uh, anything? Look, it's Saturday night, the Sabbath. We've been training for this all week long. Just because we had a rough one last night does not mean we're going to go easy tonight. So I'll see you guys. <laughs> oh, out there Saturday shit. Night there you go. How nom, could nom. I forget? Sorry. Uh, I gotta inter- yeah. Go ahead um, and interrupt. No, 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 nominate you go. And then I, I forgot the thing I was supposed to say, and I'll say it, nominate you do your thing. And then we'll, we'll go to right. uh, CCP fix the ESI. It's been broken for months. This is not okay. Fix it, please. Yes, there's that. That's fair. Uh, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not kids these days throwing money at the screen, like the hype train stuff like that. I'm trying to do like, like I learned a lot from Merkelchen last night where he's like, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I'm like, God, I don't do any of that shit. So I'm going to try to get better about that as I, as I work on being an internet pitch man, buy some furniture from us, madfern.com. It's really cool shit. We've got some friends. We've got bookshelves. We've got really good stuff for nerds like us. Check it out. Madfern.com free shipping within the continental United States. And uh, yeah, that was it. I did it Look at me. There you go. That's it. That's it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching from us, all of us here at the Meta Show. Eat my ass. (laughs) And you stay classy, (laughs) New Eden.